Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And I'm actually really behind in editing these videos because I'm only able to uh, put two or three new videos every week. So on this day, I am around the Laurier uh, Metro Station in Montreal. It's a bright sunny day in early autumn, back in October. Here I'm outside this cafe called Carmen and Phillips Cafe. They have really cute signs outside the shop. And here I'm walking in. And that's a really big cup of latte. It's like a big bowl. And I also ordered a small tart. And I'm going to sketch this view in front of me. So before the interior sketch, I usually like to, to uh, sketch my cup of latte and pastry item in the foreground area. So this is the very first page of my brand new sketchbook, Speedball brand, handbook journal, watercolor paper, 140 pounds. And I'm going to share more information with you in the sketchbook tour in December. So stay tuned. And so I like to spend like a, about a minute or so to visualize the size and placement of everything I want to include. So this girl right in front of me is a really nice foreground element. So I started sketching the shape of her hair and some strand of hair on the bottom, her neck, the collar area of her sweater, and her shoulders, her upper body, and that's pretty much it. And the back of the chair. It's pretty easy to sketch people's back view, especially when they're sitting down. Yeah, and just adding some um, little patterns on her sweater and wrinkles and, and her cup of coffee right in front of her. Adding some accentuation around the outline of her body, her elbow, and coloring in the back of the chair with solid black because this is actually black a metallic chair and I want it to come forward in front of her body. And drawing a little lamp, the side of the wall and the bottom of a shelf is three-dimensional. Finishing the table area underneath her elbow. So a lot of abstract shapes to see and connect. So just kind of drawing these lines and shapes I see around her. In front of her, in slight bit of distance, there's another man sitting at another table. It's just a pretty simple contour outline and move on to the next thing without overworking it. Some more vertical lines that defines um, the different layers of walls. There's another lamp there in the uh, middle to far ground. Some um, house plants. So right behind the lamp and above the house plant, there's this, there's this first window and a little bit towards the, the middle and trying to define uh, the door. But before that, there's a man coming in and starting to order. So I decided to, uh, to draw him. He had a pretty interesting outfit and he uh, seemed to stand there for quite a while waiting for his order. So that's him. I'm drawing him first because if I draw the door first, there's going to be overlapping lines. So sometimes it's good to wait. If you want to add a person in certain spots in your urban sketches, you might have to wait and uh, leave that space blank for a little bit and add some people and then draw the spaces behind. Now I'm starting to draw the door frame and the, the corner of the counter on his right. And some more frames around the door. There's another window on the right side the glass area of the door, the name of the cafe and the logo, and drawing the fun little image inside the logo, some more little words on the glass area, keep adding another frame for this window, this is the biggest window here, drawing the carpet by the entrance, and adding a little bit of accentuation around the window frame and add a few little lights on there. 
there is another pot of houseplant on the windowsill. Starting to see some more important lines that I need to add on. There's actually a picture frame here, very foreshortened. Because I'm sitting really close to the wall, things on the wall on my left are extremely foreshortened and distorted in shapes. So I'm adding those things on the books on the shelf. And then moving back to the right hand side, the uh, display shelf of bakery items, food and drinks. And yeah, some more of the pastry storage place. Um, another, this is a, the name of the cafe and the logo right there on the, on the glass. The tiles a little bit on the bottom. Adding some um, lights on the ceiling. Air conditioning stuff. Just trying to finish the window on the right, connecting that line with the display shelf. Starting to add these inner details inside these shelves, pastry items. These are just like simple abstract shapes that suggest what these things are. Some frames for the shelf. So these are actually um, irregular prisms on top of one another. Some drinks in here. Pretty little pastry items here on the lower shelf. So it's like semi-transparent. I could see the bar on the other side of the shelf. Adding a bit of accentuation. Trying to add these little items in very simple circular shapes. Darken this area because this part is like in shade away from the window. And adding some pretty extreme lines going down toward the right that defines the perspective. And adding some more um, shelves and little brick patterns. It's very quick and loose lines, some more little picture frames. So when you're sitting really close to a wall and trying to draw the objects on, on it, um, you're going to have a lot of extreme lines and foreshortened or squished shapes. It's very normal. Just trust what you see and draw it, even though it, if it looks really abstract. So here is a look of my finished line work. And it took me about 25 minutes to draw. And now I'm ready to paint watercolors to bring the warm atmosphere, the feeling in using colors. So I just wetted the area of the ceiling with clear water and spread out a mix of lemon yellow and cadmium yellow, very much diluted. The luminosity of lighting on a white ceiling should be a really translucent kind of yellow, not a solid yellow. Yeah, and just let it spread with a slight bit of transition, controlling the tone a little bit. It's not a very even layer of, uh, of a mellow yellow slightly stronger around the corner close to the lights and now i am just wetting the window area with clear water and just going to paint the view outside with painterly impressions i didn't draw the details outside the window because i think it's not so necessary to, to put so much detail for things in the background or in a far distance adding a bit of cerulean blue diluted for the sky area nice and soft Spread it a little bit with the residue of blue on my brush tip. So this is a very translucent cerulean blue. Very refreshing. And now I am mixing a little bit of orange into lime green. This is my recipe for painting uh, foliages in early autumn when it's beginning to change from green to yellow. I mix some orange into the lime green and not lemon yellow into the lime green because lemon yellow tend to make the green too vibrant. That's for spring leaves. 
but for autumn leaves, it's, it's, a, it's a more um, unsaturated kind of yellow green. So that's why I mix orange into the lime green. Some more meridian green around the lower part of the tree. Very soft. So it's kind of a little bit wet into wet. Creating kind of like a dream-like effect for the viewers to imagine. When you're painting, you don't have to make every single area crystal clear. You have to leave some parts a little blurry space for people's imagination to work. And some green and green playing around with a mix of uh, mint and light yellow greens blended together. Now wet onto wet, some stronger greens like green and green. I also changed my brush to like a less watery water brush so I could see a bit of brush marks that shows the textures of the foliages. So I'm just adding those brush strokes at the right time before the previous layer is completely dried. I don't want like super crisp um, brush marks, just a little bit slightly fading out into the previous layer. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And add a couple more brush strokes there in the corner of the frame there. A little bit more around the bottom of the window on the left. And now I'm punching on slight bit of vibrant oranges on top when it's completely dried. So orange stays nice and fresh on top and not merging down. And that's pretty much it for the foliages outside the window. And now just adding a little bit of raw umber and using dotting brush strokes to show the brick texture. And painting and adding a little retouches here and there. Adding some warm yellow oranges inside the display shelf to show the warm lighting shining on the pastry items and drinks. and just wetting the uh, metallic frame area with a little clear water. And I mix my own dark gray with blue, green, and magenta. Every single brush stroke is slightly different. I'm leaving a tiny little bit of shine around the middle sometimes. And the carpet is also like a dark gray color. Shadow on the tiles. Shadows for the tart. And the little dish. And just adding some leftover grays inside the display shelves. Adding some stronger orange browns containing less water for the pastry items in there. So in general, whether you're painting still life objects or a scenery, it's always a good idea um, to paint the more vibrant tones, the warm colors first, lay down the warm colors first, and then work on the more muted colors, the, the grays. So the colors stay clean and not contaminated. Also watch out the drying time of the previous layer. Now just adding these browns to show the wood, the wooden shelf on the wall. And then painting the blue stripes on her sweater. Yeah, so these blue stripes are really in nice contrast with the yellow and yellow green tones around her. Adding a little bit of uh, shade underneath her armpit, around the back. There's the deeper tones of blue and then her, the, ha the color of her hair, like yellow brown, a little darker tone around the bottom of the hair. And adding the skin, skin color for the man, using leftover brown diluted, painting his outfit, 
most people these days they tend to wear a gray or dark blue jackets and jeans adding a little contrast around the middle part of his body so his arm is really standing out better some more warm yellows for the lamp there and for these food and drinks so painting anything is about finding the balance between warm and cold colors or light and strong tones. So if a painting only contains a light tones, it's not gonna look as interesting without contrast. If it's containing too much dark tones, um, it looks too heavy. So yeah, as you can see, trying to find the balance, make sure I have enough areas for both light and shade. A little shade around the ceiling area and that's it. Here's a look of my finished sketch. So the whole thing took me about like 40, 45 minutes to do the ink and watercolors. And the weather is just beautiful. And my next video is gonna be a real-time speed sketch process video showing you how I sketched uh, this street view in 20 minutes. And here's the finished page spread. So thank you so much for watching my video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I try to update this channel two to three times a week. See you in the next video, everyone. Have a great day.